Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here at CryptoFest uh, hosted by BTCC Korea and have invited Mr. Bobby Lee, the co-founder of BTCC. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Han. So the presentation that you gave was very inspiring. So would you care to share that to our audience as well? Yeah, I talked about Bitcoin as uh, basically the topic of information as money. For the first time, we have information as money, meaning, meaning Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the 10th year of Bitcoin, and now we have information as money. What I mean by that is uh, it's a new ownership model. So essentially, if you look at the present, you know, before 2009, how do we own assets? How do we own things? There's only two ways to own it. It's ownership by title, ownership by title registration, meaning that people own real estate, they own their money in their bank accounts, they own you know, uh, stocks and bonds. All of that is tied to someone's real name identity. And that's called ownership by title. Mm -hmm. Whereas smaller things like watches, mobile phones, you know, the jacket, eyeglasses, jewelry, it's owned by physical possession. You own it because by virtue you have it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's gold bars, red wine, or even uh, artwork. You know? So that's ownership by possession. So Bitcoin and cryptocurrency represents a new form of ownership. It's a new kind altogether. Mm -hmm. It's ownership by information where someone knows the private key. They know the password. They know the private key. So by knowing the private key to the Bitcoin account, you are effectively the owner of that Bitcoin in that Bitcoin account. So it's a brand new way of ownership. So it's very revolutionary. So one downside of information-based ownership is that if you forget the information, you can't reclaim it, right? Absolutely, you're right. Uh, information as ownership, the downside is if you forget or you lose access to the device holding the, the private key, then you've essentially lost access to the asset class. That's, uh, but every asset has downside. With mm -hmm. gold, someone can rob you. You know, your mobile phone, some people lose it, they leave it in the taxi, they lose it, and that's gone. Uh, with, with ownership by identity registration, it's under third party control. So if you do something they don't like, they can seize or freeze your assets. So every asset class has downsides, and information by ownership has no, is no exception. But isn't fiat don't governments have a system where it ensures its users or users of the fiat that if someone robs you or if someone um, you know, commits a crime against you, that they ensure and back and support by infrastructure legal issues? Well, in the sense that if money is, uh, if the bank runs out of money, they can, the government can print more money to fill your bank account. So that's, true. Just, that's just units of money, right? But, the, but the, what they haven't done, at least over the last hundred years, is they haven't really given us true value protection. If you want to store a thousand euros in a bank account or one million won in a bank account or more, mm -hmm. you know, we just don't know Where 20 years from now how much value that money is because they're constantly printing more of that money, making more of the fiat money. You know, it's, not made, it's not necessarily paper printing, but it's electronic printing, QE2, QE3. They're, they're uh, issuing more and more fiat money out there. And by doing so, it's devaluing your money. So that's, uh, that's the problem with money so today. Let's switch, switch, uh, well, switch gears and uh, move to a more recent topic. Yeah. So the Chinese government well, used to retain a conservative perspective. However, the situation got a bit harsher. They imposed bans on airdrops. And recently, they had tax inspections, which forced a mining facility to close down. So what's your perspective on the Chinese government taking a conservative standpoint in the crypto uh, industry itself? Well, so I, I don't have a lot to comment on the Chinese government. I'm not a citizen. I'm not a voting member. Uh, in, in the government style in China, they, they can decide to set rules and laws as they wish. So it's not necessarily for public discourse or for debate. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, the, the trend is evident. I think China has a reason to slow down and cap this sort of craziness with tokens and ICOs and all that. So I came across a video where you explain about your uh, investment portfolio. So and then one of which consists of Bitcoin Cash. And Bitcoin Cash, it's November 15th today, which when the fork happened. So there are two, two parties uh, conflicting against the ideology behind Bitcoin. So if, what's your perspective on it? And if you do have it, uh, which part you support, if I may be able to ask that question? Yeah, Bitcoin Cash, I think the two sides are Bitcoin uh, uh, ABC, yes. ABC, and then it's Bitcoin SV. Mm -hmm. SV for Satoshi's vision, and ABC being the first reference client for Bitcoin Cash. Um, so first of all, I have Bitcoin Cash. I, I support Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. Bitcoin Cash, just like Bitcoin BTC, is a, legitimate, uh, is a legitimate asset under the Bitcoin moniker. 
uh, it's, a, it's a legitimate child. It's a legitimate child on their Bitcoin. So it's a fork. Uh, so in, in the sense that the upcoming Bitcoin cash fork, I'm, I'm learning more about it myself. I don't plan to just support one and ignore the other. Mm -hmm. I will, by, by nature, all my Bitcoin cash holdings will be on both chains if, they're, if both chains do exist. Uh, fundamentally, I, I think uh, even though Craig Wright has been disruptive, he, he, people don't like him very much. He's, he's not very sociable. Uh, at least that's, I haven't met him in person, but that's a perception. And, uh, but however, he, he, is, he does have merit. I think his technical, I think his uh, intentions are interesting. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see what Bitcoin SV does. So, uh, is, it, is it okay if I ask uh, your take on the comment that uh, Craig Wright is a, he claims to be the Satoshi Nakamoto? Yeah, I think he's one of the three people that's part of Satoshi Nakamoto. Absolutely. So moving on to, since we're here in uh, CryptoFest that was by BTCC Korea, moving yeah. on to the exchange itself, uh, the large theme that BTCC Korea has is IEOs. And com as a competition, uh, one of the uh, new concepts in the industry is mining exchanges. So uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what's your perspective on the uh, mining exchanges itself, which is a rising concept, and uh, how the IEO would benefit the crypto industry? I don't like the term. I think IEO is just a speculative marketing gimmick term. Mm -hmm. I think I, just like ICO was initially as well. Mm -hmm. I think it just because the bad name of ICOs, they just changed the name to IEOs. To me, it's all the same thing. It's all tokens. It's all centralized. Uh, to me, this is not very interesting at all. I'm not a big supporter of tokens or IEOs or ICOs for that matter. Um, I think I think the the innovation. I'm a big I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. I think the what's most interesting to me over the last seven years that I've been involved in the industry is actually Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin as the world's first and most relevant decentralized digital asset class. Mm -hmm. It's a new ownership model. It's about freedom of money. I think that's where the action should be. That's where the innovation is. That's where the value is. However, there's a sideshow circus of tokens, you know, pump and dumps of, uh, of course. MLMs, multi-level marketing schemes, and a lot of, a lot of, you know, mediocre projects are trying to fundraise using ICOs, IEOs, just giving new names. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not very interesting. I think good business models can succeed without ever doing an ICO, without ever doing blockchain-related stuff. Most of the blockchain projects out there are all fake blockchain or all private fake database mm -hmm. versions. Uh, if they actually came out and truthfully tell us they're using database implementation, I'd give them two thumbs up. But the fact that they get confused what, of what blockchain is, I think it's very, it's very damning and very telling. So you being a Bitcoin maximalist, I have to ask you, Bitcoin, the network itself is, there have been uh, limitations that have been proposed in the industry, such as a slow speed or high fees. So, uh, and the Bitcoin core team has introduced technologies to overcome that, however, there seems to be some struggle in the overcoming the uh, aforementioned hurdles. So uh, if you don't mind me asking, how sh should the Bitcoin core community uh, overcome the uh, hurdles that have, they are facing right now in the network? Well, are you talking about the Bitcoin community or the Bitcoin core? I mean, Bitcoin core is a development group. Mm -hmm. uh, I I'd say the Bitcoin core because they're developing the, uh, well, applications, services necessary to the Bitcoin network. So I'm a supporter of Bitcoin in general, mm -hmm. you know, Bitcoin BTC, Bitcoin BCH, you know, all the, all the legitimate children of Bitcoin. Um, and they're, they're, it's, it's a natural market. There's competing dev groups and uh, ideologies. Um, so I, I don't want to comment too specifically about a specific implementation, a specific a technical plan, you know, whether a game's market acceptance is for the market to decide. So I don't have any specific comments on that. Mm -hmm. And um, one interesting comment I heard from you was the, uh, that you are not very much support of the concept of token. However, it's something that can't be detached with the technology of blockchain. No, it, it's, okay, so tokens are fine, right? Subways mm -hmm. have tokens, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. game, game arcades use tokens, that's fine. Mm -hmm. What I'm not in support of, what I'm against, is companies, institutions, issuing tokens as a form of investment fundraising. Mm -hmm. I think that is uh, insincere and uh, I think it's fraud. I think companies, whether it's a New York subway system, they should issue, you know, either issue, you should get investment money by issuing stock equity mm -hmm. or get loans by issuing debt. I think those are legitimate ways to raise funds. But issuing utility tokens uh, or issuing rather issuing uh, 
you know, equity tokens disguised as utility tokens for the purpose of raising money and then telling people that the value of the utility tokens will go up over time, I think that's very insincere and fraudulent. Well, uh, that's an interesting point. I have to kind of like think about that. But <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't like what I say, but I'll speak my mind. <laughs> so uh, moving to your uh, personal issues, uh, it's your year off. Uh, and the last time we, uh, I interviewed you, uh, you said you were writing a book. So uh, finish, well, finishing up on the interview, I have to ask you, how's the book coming along? No, it has, hasn't moved along at, <laughs> at all. <laughs> I want to do something in that, in that area in the coming years, yeah. And uh, your future plans, maybe? So uh, nothing, nothing planned yet. I'm still looking around. A lot of people ask me to join or to advise or to help with their projects. But frankly speaking, nothing has uh, been exciting to me yet. So. Well, that is all the time we have today, and thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Bobby Lee, the co-founder of BTCC. Thank you for watching.